Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. It's time to finish out the deep resonance system and make it actually generate power. So let's finish up some of the last steps and do a bit more automation. I put some cobblestone in here and some filter material in here. I'm going to use that to supply the magma crucible for the lava. And of course the filters for the purifiers. I've also got some extra in my inventory here. Oh, and some more ender pearls too. Throw those in there, there. No cobblestone, got plenty of that. More filters. 1400 filters, that should be enough for a while. So there's something I want to test too. Remember how originally I thought I needed two separate channels to transfer stuff to and from the infusing laser, but then it turns out you can't extract from the infusing laser, so I just simplified it to two channels. Well, I think I can actually just make it one channel, which is what I did here. So we're extracting based on the different colors, right? Ender pearls on white, the gunpowder on red, and I'm just inserting on no color in particular. I think that'll work. So let's try it. Oh, I meant to bring a lever with me so that I could give redstone to this. You know, we'll just see if it works. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem. Right, so I've set up the crystallizer over here. It has to be on top of a tank. So we need um, 6,000 millibuckets. We need six buckets worth of RCL in this tank. And then the crystallizer will work on it and produce a crystal in here. Got them hooked up to connections and named. Let's see what else we want. Do we have a connection? We don't have a connection to the magma crucible, so if we want to supply that with cobblestone, we're going to need to add a connection. Put that there. Um, we need to... Blue on the bottom. So that's fine. Take some stuff from the bottom. Alright. That's all good. We need connections on the purifying tanks. Not Well, they're not tanks, the purifying machines, because we need to insert filter material into them. So let's do that. Okay. <laughs> this is going to look so much better once I put all the facades in. You can see it just looks hideous right now. Thankfully, though, these network cables from Xnet have a full collision box. If the collision box was as big as the connector or the wires actually looked, then you'd just like fall into these gaps, but nope, you just walk right over them. So let's set up some more stuff. And if need be, I could like jam all this stuff onto one channel, like one item channel, all this item transfer stuff, and I could just put filters for everything to filter with the type of thing that gets transferred if I needed to, but I don't think I do. Oh, let's give power to the crystallizer. That's the crystallizing tank. Where's the actual crystallizer? Finished crystal. That's the crystallizer. Insert. It should now be powered. It is. Let's make a new item channel. Um, maybe I will filter. Let's do some filtering. So I'll get a filter. No pun intended, a filter and a piece of cobblestone. I'll leave this channel alone just because... I don't know. <laughs> it's fine, I can always consolidate these if need be. So let's extract... from cobblestone. Extract a stack from there. And a thermal expansion. We'll insert, filter on cobblestone, and from new filters, extract a stack from there, and for these purifiers, these three purifiers, we'll insert and put filters for that. I don't know if it lets you put the wrong stuff inside of a purifier, but no reason to risk it. Oh, I left the channel on while I was doing that. I guess we'll, we're about to find out. So this thing's full of cobblestone. That worked. These are not full of cobblestone. And yeah, you can't put cobblestone in there anyway. Good. Okay, so filter material and cobblestone is now automated. Right, so... 
I'm thinking what I'm going to do... Right, so we already have it so the program can tell us when we need to send stuff to the crystallizer. It's already sending the message, sending to crystallizer. Now we just need to actually do that. I think I'm going to do that with another signal from this node. So let's put one here. So this one will be send to Crystal crystallizer. And I'm not going to write that into my notes. That's to the north. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I've just got this box with wires connected to it. Um, so we're going to need to change our program, of course. Um, let's make it... Let's do a logic thing for that. So where's the third redstone? This one, right? Send a crystallizer. Yep. So sensor. Redstone. When it equals 15, we will output green. Okay, this is going to get a little jam-packed in this program because we're going to have to fit three things into here, and I don't want them to connect to any of these other things, so it's going to look really confusing. Um, I could rearrange it? I probably should rearrange it. Yeah, so let's rearrange these. I'll just put these like this. That should be fine. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem super intelligent about fixing these connections. You can see it kind of just left them where they were. So the green connection, if you have a green connection on this tile, that means like after it's done executing this thing, it moves on to whatever tile this points to. So it's just telling you like the the program flow. So if you don't set that, then it's obviously not going to behave correctly. Okay, that'll be a lot neater. So we send the message, sending to crystallizer. Then I want to set redstone. Have this point down because we're going to continue down here. So it's going to set the redstone of... I believe it was node 4 north set it to 15 um, so extracting takes a little bit of time I think what I'm going to do is just it sets it and turns on and XNet is going to start transferring at that point and I think I'm just going to leave it on for a while so I'll do await and I'll set it for um, let's see XNet does a bucket every 20 ticks let's set this for well if it does a bucket every 20 ticks and it takes 6 buckets then I don't know like 160 just to be safe like 8 seconds yeah that should be fine so we wait, and then we turn the redstone off. Be easier just to copy this one, actually. Copy that and set it to zero. So we'll trust that in that time, Extent was able to transfer fluid. Then I think that should be it. Oh, and it turns out I never needed to use this event restart to go back here. I thought I might need to, but apparently not. So we'll just toss that away. That's good, actually. I guess that means, you know, if I didn't have to use a, a go-to, basically, and instead it was all kind of handled by my logic program flow or whatever you want to call it, then I guess that means I designed it well? Sort of? Maybe? Okay, let's try it. Shove it in here. Let's clear this. So let's just see if this turns on. It does. So it should turn on for six seconds and then turn off and then turn on pretty soon after that. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so we need to be able to extract from these fluid tanks, and it looks like you can't extract from the same side that you put in. So like, right, I already have a connection here that can go into the tank, but since you can only set a side to go in or out or nothing, I think I need to make another connection. Okay, and we'll set that to out. Whoops. RCL tank in. RCL tank out. 
And I already got this set to in, so you can only insert into this tank. Okay, that's good. Um, let's give that a sec, actually. Poop. Actually, I'm probably too late. Yeah, it's stuck on. I'll just break that for a sec. Put the program back in, that's fine, as long as it's not getting the signal. Don't want it to get the signal, because I don't want to accidentally transfer stuff, so... Let's do a fluid channel. I'll just make a new one, can always consolidate if need be. Disable it, I suppose. So where's RCL? RCL take in. RCL tank out. So we're going to extract from that. But only on green. Right? That's our... Oh, right. It's not appearing because I broke it. But yeah, that's the other... The next color, right? White, red, and then green. Yeah. So extract on green. Insert into... Crystallizing tank. I want to make sure we only get 6,000 in there. There's no reason to have any more than that, because that's how much you need for a crystal. I should be able to turn this on, and it shouldn't do anything. Because the redstone isn't down there for it to receive the signal. Okay. Good. That's good, but... There is a problem we're going to have. Imagine this thing is in production. If this thing's in production, it's going to have a large supply of RCL getting melted. So this tank is going to be full of stuff. And at the moment, I have it set so that this thing just always extracts the raw RCL from here and puts it into these purifying tanks. That's a problem. Because, let's say we get these three tanks up to where we want them to be. Purity 100, Strength 70, Efficiency 60%. Then we start to transfer it over here. Then, while transferring, there's nothing that's going to stop raw, unpurified RCL from going into this tank and mixing with the rest. Therefore, ruining the quality, and we'll extract some of that ruined quality. That's not good, so we want to make sure that we only extract, or we want to prevent extracting RCL from this tank to this one while we're transferring. How do we do that? It would be so, so easy if I could just disable on color, but I think you can only enable on color. I'm pretty sure. Enable on color. Yeah. Ah, if only I could disable on color. Let me think of how I want to do this. Oh, you know what? I think it's actually super easy now that I think about it. Yeah. Okay, so let me disable this just so we don't transfer anything into the crystallizing tank. Let's put this back here. It's going to go on. Um, I think we just need to add... Yeah, you can add multiple sensors. Oh, this is send to crystallizer. Yeah, so I can have the same connection do another sense, but instead of sensing for 15, sense for zero. And I'll set it to blue. So when the redstone is off, when we don't want to send it to crystallizer, we output blue. Then I can just make it so that we only enable the transfer of fluids from here to here on blue. So we'll only transfer fluids when this is zero, when we're not sending it to the crystallizer. Yeah. That should work. Now I just need to find where I actually do that. Well, it's not the lava. So I guess it's this one. RCL tank in. Yeah, so we only want to extract on blue. That should do it. Okay. Um, so let me re-enable this. This should send it to the crystallizer. Should get six buckets. There we go. Should crystallize it. There we go. Now it's working. 
Um, I think the issue is that I didn't output on the top of this tank. So I destroyed the crystallizer, set it to output, and then replaced the crystallizer. I thought I didn't have to do that, though, because I thought I read somewhere in the RF Tools manual that setting, like, extract and input like this is only needed for things outside of Deep Resonance, but the Deep Resonance machines kind of just knew what to do. But, oh well. Anyway, it's crystallizing it up. I'm excited to see how big this crystal's gonna be. I know it's not the best quality fluid, strength 70, efficiency 60, but it's gonna be pretty damn good. Okay. Well, well we're anticipating that. Let's... Oh, by the way, it's actually keeping it filled at 6,000, right? Or is it not? No, it'll never get to the... Yeah, it'll never get to the point where it can... push liquid. It'll never get to the point where it sends to the crystallizer if the level in here is beneath six buckets worth. And it is beneath six buckets, so that's why it stopped extracting. Okay. Anyway. Almost done. Um, so, we're gonna want some other things. We're gonna want some generators... Generator controller? I'm not quite sure what that does, but I'm sure that's important. We're going to want a couple more things that I don't have here, too. We're going to want a pedestal. <gasps> we have our first crystal. You can feel latent power present in this crystal. It's our first real crystal. <sighs> okay. Um. Hmm, does it actually not tell you? Hmm, I can't get it to actually display how much power is in it. Well, I guess once we start actually using it, it'll probably tell us. And it's starting to construct another crystal. I don't think it'll be able to finish it, though. Alright, let me go make a couple more things, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've made some more stuff. And while I'm putting that down, let's start the process of making more fluid, actually. So, which reminds me, actually, I need to automate the resonating ore being put inside of here, don't I? Hmm. Well, we'll do that in a bit. So now, none of that should be going in here. Because it's still shooting it full of things to make it all nice. Yeah. Seems to be working okay. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that for now. Let it do its thing. I think everything's okay there. So, now that we have a crystal, um, I think we're going to need a combination of generator controller, generators, energy collectors, and the pedestal. Not quite all sure how it fits together, but um, let's try this. So, I th yeah, I think that just turns on and off the generator based on a redstone signal. Well, maybe once it's hooked up to, to some stuff. I don't know if they need to touch each other. I'll put this down. I think this is for the crystal. Oh. God, it's such a nasty noise. Sounds like it's broken and messing it up, but no, it's fine. Okay, so now that it's placed down, look, it actually... It doesn't say how much it holds, but it does tell you how much RF it's going to generate per tick. So it's going to generate almost 12,000 RF per tick. This one crystal, keeping in mind there's nothing limiting us to just having one crystal going at a time, but just this one crystal is going to generate almost like three times the amount of power that I'm generating with my canola farm. And this isn't even the best strength and efficiency. Okay, so that place is a crystal. Um, part of a generator multi-block. Place them in any configuration. I know there's like lasers that shoot out. There's also these energy collectors. Place this on top of generator with crystals nearby. So yeah, that goes like on top of these. I've, so the generators are the things that actually hold the power itself. So this is what I'm going to extract the power from. And then, I'll just make this like face upwards. 
And then if I put that in here, it's going to place it above. Okay, and then... Ooh. Ooh. I think the generator controller needs to be touching a generator. And I think the generators maybe need to be touching each other. Yes. Cool looking and sounding. So, oh yeah. Oh, okay, that thing is already full of power. Like, instantly. We've used up 0.1% of its power, apparently. Huh. So, I can't actually just use one generator. Because, as it says here... Here, a single block can support up to two crystals and maximum of 10,000 RF per tick. This thing puts out almost 12,000 RF per tick, and if it's better um, efficiency later on, then it'll put out up to 20,000 RF per tick. So one generator won't be able to take the full power of this crystal. I need multiple. I'd really like a configuration like this, you know? Like laser beams shooting out multiple directions, but since the generators need to touch each other. Well, they don't need to touch each other, though, do they? I just need more generator controllers, I suppose. Okay. Okay. So how many crystals do I want going at the same time? Okay, I'm thinking a configuration like this. So we're going to have four crystals in the center on these pedestals. And each crystal will have two generators whoop, on each side. And then hopefully, the generator controller can be shared between two generators. Because I've got those in between these, just to save on the number of generator controllers. Let's see if that works. I think we've got two crystals. Yeah, so that just formed another one. By the way, something is wrong. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, not- this is- this is not what I thought was wrong, but something else is wrong. The purity is 99.8%. Hmm. What is it telling it to do? Send to crystallizer. How dare you send that shit to the crystallizer? Ah, oh, this is reading the purity as 100. Hmm. Okay, so I don't think anything's technically going wrong with the program. I think it's a rounding error. Because I think it... Yeah, so in the program... Um, where's my programmer? Let's put that back down. So in the program, when I check the purity level, this one... Uh, if we look down here... At the very bottom, it says result. Purity between 0 and 100. Integer. That's a problem. But I don't think there's anything we can do about it. Because the problem is the original number, if you look, its purity right now is 99.7%, which is not an integer. An integer is a whole number with no decimal. That's a float. 99.7. And I guess it's rounding 99.7 up to 100. The nearest integer. I don't think there's really anything we could do about that. That's just a problem with the programmer, really. It's not like it's a big deal. It's really not a big deal at all. I mean, the purity is 0.2% impure. Like, eh. That's fine, right? It's just. A tiny bit of radiation, probably. Unless I could somehow make it overcharge on the amount of ender pearls. Hmm. Eh. I don't think it's a problem we're solving. I think it's fine. Right, so we got two crystals. Let's place them in and just see if this works how I think it's going to work. So, four levers. Wait, no, not four levers, two levers. This goes on the controller. It's 
Some crystals are too powerful for the size generator. Hmm. Hmm. That is not behaving the way I thought it would. What is it doing? Hmm. What is it doing? I really don't understand how it's behaving, but I don't think this shared generator thing really works. Like, this is... Shining. Oh, hunger. Oh, oh, oh. Let's turn this off. So that's uh, the effects of radiation. It's giving me hunger. Actually, I think I have a radiation monitor. Yes. 1600, 1500. You can see it's going down. So yeah, we'll build a proper shielding for this place later. But yeah, even these crystals with... This one's 100% purity. Actually, they're both 100% purity, so even 100% purity does produce radiation. You can only imagine if they weren't 100% how fast they'd produce radiation. But, um... Yeah, the shared controller thing doesn't work. I guess I just need more generator controllers. Do I? Let's, let's just test this. What if I just double the amount of generator controllers? Like... Had one here... And a separate one here. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay. And then now it's not throwing errors, right? If I turn that off, it should throw errors, because the one generator can't handle how big the crystal is. Is it only on startup that it throws the error? On startup, error. Startup. Another arrow? What does it mean, though? Hmm. I don't know. It should be big enough. It should be fine. Right? Because one crystal's 12,000 is being split up between two generators. I don't know. It should be fine. So let me just go double the amount of generator controllers. Okay, instead of making more generator controllers, what if I just connect both generators to one generator controller? I think that'll make it stop complaining. So let's try this. This looks kind of like a neat configuration. I know the generator controllers don't look good though, because it's uneven. There's no center. Um, but I think I'll probably just hide these underneath after I verify that it actually works. So let's see if it does work. There are too many energy collectors on this generator. What? Oh. Yeah, I think I read that in the book. You can only have one energy collector per generator. So if I do this, it's okay? It's actually connected to both crystals? Okay, what if I activate this one? It connects to nothing. This is not complaining about not being able to take it all, though. Which is odd. I think I need to transition to just, like, one really... Let's turn this off. To one, like... Really big... Generator multi-block, it seems like. Okay, let's see if this setup works. I've got a 3x3 three three of generators with a single energy collector in the center. And then the pedestal is all around the outside. Let's see if that works. I guess for now I'll just put it there, but yeah, later I think I'll put it beneath. Okay, there we go, so that works. Yeah, already full. <laughs> Alright, job's done. Yeah, I've used like a couple percent of that one. Mm, a little bit more than 3% on that one. I wish it displayed how much total power was left in there. I thought it did. Ah, but it doesn't. Oh well. Okay, so I've started putting together some XNet connections. So 
So I connected every single pedestal because we're going to need to insert the crystal inside of it. I also connected, if I can get below here, I uh, just connected to one of the generators. Since it is a multi-block, I think one of the generators counts as all the generators. So that's where, I, uh, that's where I will extract the power, which, speaking of, to make sure we can extract it fast enough, I should probably use a connector upgrade kit to turn it into an advanced connector so we can extract more energy. There we go. Um, I tried to connect directly to the generator controller down here because we're going to want to send redstone to it to turn it off and on. But it actually would not connect to the generator controller directly. So I've got a connection uh, right... Can't get up here. Right here. Got a little, like, platform of redstone if you can see it. There it is. So I'm connecting to that. Hopefully that'll work fine. And we're actually going to go with a separate XNet network from the other one, because this one... I forgot to mention, I actually did end up having to put the uh, extracting the ender pearls and the gunpowder on separate channels again. Don't know why, but just had to. Um, all the channels are busy, so it's pretty cluttered, and there's really no reason... There's really no reason at all that the networks need to be connected. Because this is the power generation side, and this is the crystal generation side, and they really could be totally separate, and I don't think there'll be any problems at all. Just checking to make sure it's not doing anything weird. It's doing, doing well. Although I'm still having the issue where this thing won't crystallize unless I destroy it and replace it. I think we're having a chunk loading issue. Again, similar to the Batania thing, but anyway, I'll deal with that later. For now, let's try to get this working. I just plopped a wireless RF transmitter on this controller just to give it some power. Um, so let's... We're always going to want to insert crystals, right? So... I'll leave it on, it's fine. The... Crystallizer. So we're going to extract from the crystallizer. And we're going to insert into all the pedestals. Speaking of, can the pedestals hold an extra crystal? Like, if I destroy this crystal and put it here, it can hold an extra one? It can. And then if I break this one, it'll probably place it. Yes. Okay. Okay, so all they're always... Every single pedestal is going to have an extra crystal. Room for an extra crystal. Okay, interesting. I don't think it actually matters, but I'll set this to round robin. I'm pretty sure it won't matter. I think it'll only matter if one is completely empty, and then it could get two crystals at a time. It, ah, can't hurt. Okay, so that's always happening. Now we need the condition of when to turn it on. When do we turn on the generator? What I'm going to do is make it so that when a battery bank, which I have yet to create, gets below a certain amount, like let's say if it gets below 50%, I want the generator to turn on, and then once it reaches 100%, I want it to turn off. Which is kind of an interesting problem, because it's relatively easy to make it so that I could set up a logic channel to measure the RF inside of these batteries and say like if it's below 80%, turn on, otherwise don't or otherwise turn it off. But then the problem with that is it'll flip-flop, right? Like it'll go above 80% or whatever. If 80% is the threshold, it'll, it'll go above 80%, stop generating the power, go below 80%, start generating the power, and it'll just flip on and off, which maybe isn't a bad thing. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but it's annoying and it doesn't look good and I don't like it. It's a lot cleaner to make it kick on when it gets below like 40%, 50%, whatever, and then have it turn off once it reaches 100%. That just feels so much better. And I had no idea you could do this, but apparently the logic gate from RF Tools actually allows you to do that. Believe it or not, hidden, hidden within all this stuff <laughs> is actually the ability to do that. And it rests in this keep. Keep previous redstone signal. 
I haven't actually done this before, but I heard about it, so let me try to set this up. Okay, let me see if I understand this correctly. I'm going to attempt to explain it, and if I can explain it, then I think I understand it. <laughs> so, I have this logic gate placed down. Just the basic function of a logic gate, by the way, is you have three inputs, A, B, and C, and then you have a single output. This here is showing you all the possible combinations, like if A, B, and C are all off, if only C is on, if only B is on, so on and so forth if only A is on, all the possible combinations of these three signals. To make this work correctly, I believe what we need are two different signals. We'll go over how we're going to get those signals later, but we need two signals. We need one redstone signal, which is going to be this connection here. I named it low power. This is when you want to kick on the generator. However you measure that the power is low, you need to send a redstone signal to this place when it is low, whatever you determine low to be. So when power is low, we're going to send a redstone signal to the left side, which is A. And when power is high, when you want to turn off the generator, I'm sending a redstone signal to C. So low power, high power. And this is the output, which is going to be whether we turn on the generator or not. If this output is off, that means we don't want to turn on the generator. If it's on, we do want to turn it on. So I believe how this works to do that flip-flop action that I talked about where once it goes, say, below 40%, it'll turn on, and then it won't turn off until it reaches 100%, or whatever you happen to set the thresholds at. How that works is the keep. Keep previous redstone signal. So you can tell it to either, on a certain input, Either turn the redstone on, off, or keep. So just imagine this. A means low power. And A only, so A only is this one. When we're on this input, this configuration, this means we're receiving the A signal only, which means we want to turn on the generator, which is why this is set to on. When we're receiving the C signal only, which is the high power, which is this one here, we set the redstone signal off. If all other possible combinations are set to keep previous redstone signal, we should get the behavior we want. Because, let's say we're at low power, low power triggers, we turn the redstone signal on, now the low power signal will turn off, and at that point, nothing will be on. Which is going to keep the previous redstone signal, which is going to keep it on. So the generator is going to stay on, even though it stopped receiving that low power signal. Then, once it uh, gets the high power signal, it's going to turn off. And then it'll start to go below, and it'll go back to the not receiving any signal at all, which will keep the off. So actually, I guess these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these 5 keeps probably don't have to be set to keep, but it eh, doesn't hurt to leave it on keep. So that should get the behavior we want. But let's test it. I'm not going to assume that works. Let's actually test it on something small scale. This is not at all what I'm going to use to store power, because it's tiny and kind of pathetic for something so large. But let's try a basic energy cube from Mechanism. It stores 800,000 RF. I've got logic set here. Unfortunately, it cuts off the leftmost number because this field isn't very big. But basically, this is low energy, which is set to 200,000, and high energy, which is set to 800,000, which is 100%. So when it reaches below 200,000 in this cube, it should turn the generator on. And when it reaches 800,000, or full, it should turn it off. I haven't actually set that up yet, but I'm having an output a color. So, low power, white, means we want to... Ah, right, I should probably connect these, shouldn't I? There we go. That should help quite a bit. <laughs> hey, there's my connections. So, when we're outputting a white signal a white color, we want to output to the low power redstone, which is this one. 
So output redstone of 15 upon white. When we reach the high power, we're going to output on red. So this is high power. Output redstone 15 on red. So that should work for outputting it, but now we need to actually read the generator on signal, which this should be a capital O, otherwise it's a little bit hard to read. Generator on. So we want to sense that. Sense redstone, 15. So when, oh, when it's 15, let's output green. So upon green, we want to turn the generator on, which is this generator controller redstone. So output a redstone of 15 upon green. Okay. Actually, did that turn on? Is, is this channel on? It is on. Okay. That should work. So let's test it. Right now it's full, which would explain why it's not on. Um, Oh, 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 one additional thing. I should probably actually transfer power, shouldn't I? I'll leave that on. So here's our generator, which has an advanced connector. Which allow us, allows us to transfer up to... What is that? 1,000, 10... Allows us to transfer up to 100,000 per tick, thanks to the advanced connection. That is amazing. I guess I'll transfer the full amount, not that the cube is going to be able to accept anything even close to that. Um, yeah, so we're always going to extract, we'll insert into here. Okay, that should be good. Um, this is... The problem is, these generators are so huge here, they're going to be able to transfer it crap ton of energy to this cube before it burns it up but anyway um let's just put a energy trash can on top of this thing and see how fast we can empty it so it should be emptying 4.5 million is it going down <laughs> if it's going down it's going down very slowly um hold on let me turn this off it's not emptying but i told it to output on the top hmm I wonder if I need, like, an energy pipe in between. Okay, unfortunately, the energy cube transfers energy really slow, so even though I put this connection here to the energy trash can, it's going down really slowly. So let's just change this threshold, shall we? Um, here. Let's change this to 5. So when this goes below 500,000, it should turn the generators on. Let's see. And... Huh. Huh. Yes! <laughs> okay. First part works. It's not transferring energy into the basic energy cube, so let's turn that on. There we go, and... Hmm. That's strange. So... It's not getting it up to 800,000. Um, maybe I should just relax this number to not be literally 100%. This here, let's... Let's turn this off for a sec. It's not gonna mess anything up, no. So the generator's still on. So yeah, let's make this less than 100%. Let's make this... Greater than, I don't know, seven. Oh, Christ. I really wish it showed you more. Seven, nine. Is that, is that right? So it's almost 100%. Okay. Enable. That should turn off. Yes! <laughs> it works. See, we're getting the high power signal. And if I turn off transferring power, it's going to start to lose power. Now we're no longer getting the high power signal, but we're not going to turn it on until, once again, it gets below... 
just to make this easy, let's put this to 7. When it gets below 7, should turn on right now. That is so cool! Oh, I love this thing! This logic gate's amazing! Okay. Um, let's turn that back on, just to get it to turn it off. Great. Alright, let's disconnect that. I have horrible hunger now. I wonder how much radiation... How much radiation is here? 3,800. I don't know how much that is. Like, I don't know how bad it can get, but that doesn't sound good. Okay, so... Yeah, this absolutely works. So now the only thing left to do to get this whole, like, energy storing system really... pretty much ready to go to transfer energy to the mainland is mostly just to actually get my huge battery bank in place. So I want something that can transfer energy very fast and something that can store a lot of power. I think what I want to use is Ender IO capacitors. So I think I talked a bit in the past about how I couldn't really make capacitors because I couldn't make... Um, wait, are they called capacitors? Capacitor bank. Yeah, I couldn't really make capacitor banks because they require large amounts of basic capacitors which requires large amounts of dilithium crystals. Well, we kind of solved our dilithium crystal issue, didn't we? Because we went to the moon. So I think I processed them all. Yep. So we have many stacks of dilithium crystals. Let's make some Ender IO capacitor banks. So what am I going to need? I'm going to want to make the vibrant capacitor bank. So it's just a single vibrant capacitor bank holds 25 million RF. Um, but the really the super, super nice thing about capacitor banks from Ender IO is that they form multi-block structures. So if you put two of these vibrant capacitor banks together, they'll be one thing. They'll hold 50 million RF instead of 25 each. And the transfer rate will be doubled. So everything adds together. All the capacity and the transfer rate, it all adds together into some huge multi-block structure. So... Pretty much perfect for making a big battery bank. What does that require, though? Can we make that? Octatic capacitors comes from lots of other capacitors. Oh, so we're going to need... We're going to need a bunch of capacitors, because we got to go up the tier of capacitors. Um, like, energetic alloy, we can totally make... Vibrant crystal, vibrant alloy, we can totally make emeralds, it's not too bad. Electrical steel, we can make empowered emeratic crystal. We can make, although it is going to take a lot of emeralds, but we can do that. What is the Yag Nugget, though? What does that come from? Yag Ingot. Yag Dust. I don't think we get Yag Dust directly, do we? Do I have to make it from yttrium, aluminum, neodymium, chromium? I think so. Okay, let me make some of these precursor things. Electrical steel and whatnot. Well, I've got a bunch of the alloys made or being made. One of the things I need is a bunch of empowered emeratic crystal blocks. So let's see if my empower setup here is actually working. So I'm going to make seven of them. Put all the seven separate ingredients in the sides. I just heard a zombie. I just accidentally killed the light that was here. Whoops. Alright, so everything's inside. Let's put this in the center. Okay, we'll empower, but the question is what will happen next? Will it take it away correctly? There we go. And it didn't work. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I think I know what to do to make it work, but uh, I think I'll save that for some other time. I just kind of did it manually. It still saves me some trouble because I don't have to place everything in every pedestal. But I do have to babysit it. To be fixed later. Okay, I think I have pretty much everything I need. So I've got some of my Yag ingots over here. Let's grab those, let it make some more, that's fine. I should have a bunch of energetic alloy. And I also should have a bunch of... I forgot what it was called. 
Vibrant Alloy. Take the extra out of there. There should be everything I need to make the capacitors. Let's try to make a stack of capacitors to start with. Just basic capacitors. So we're going to need tons of Electrum... Arcanine, no! This world is too dangerous for animals. And again, there's a Megatorch right here, it's supposed to prevent spawns. Doing a great job, huh? That's happened more times, actually, than I'm even close to comfortable with. Just in this episode, it's happened like three times, so... Yeah, I gotta put you somewhere more safe. And I gotta, like, actually make this place safe before I put you back out here. Um, the only safe place with the cats and the owls. <laughs> oh, you sound so sad. It's okay, I like it in here. I'll let you out soon. I don't want what happened to Growlithe to happen to Arcanine. Anyway, where was I? Let's make a bunch of stacks of that. We are also going to need tons of resonating... Oh, that takes ender shards. Hmm. It's a little bit annoying. Because you only make like eight at a time. And now I'm out of ender shards. And I take like a glass cutter and an ender pearl. Hmm. Well, I think what will save me a lot of pain is probably to use an RF Tools Crafter for this. So let me show you the RF Tools Crafter, because I haven't actually showed you how it works. I just kind of briefly introduced you to the fact that I'm using it uh, over there in that whole setup. Give it some power. There we go. Let's get that stuff out of there. So I want to teach it a recipe that... Glass cutter plus an ender pearl equals ender shards. All items input slot are consumed. That's fine. Results of crafting operation will go in the output buffer. No, because we want to use this for crafting the resonating redstone crystals. We don't want to actually put this into the output. It's only for the finished product. So that goes into the internal buffer, the end result. Let's apply that. So now if we give it that and that, Yep, you can see every time we put another pearl in, it crafts that. Okay, now let's teach it another recipe. This will be the final one. Let's get rid of that stuff. So this one will go to the external because that is going to be the recipe for this. So it's redstone, 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 and you. And that goes to external. Okay, so now if I put this in there... Yeah, so I just crafted a bunch. So now if I just pour all of this in there... Ah, slight problem. So you can see it completely spammed the inventory. Um, so we can fix that by grabbing a bunch of redstone. What you can do is you can put it into a... S oh, right, it's going to use it all up, huh? See, so this is the remember the current items in the internal and external buffers. That's basically going to make sure that you like reserve a space for whatever is already there. So if I can put the redstone here, uh, let's change this to slow mode. Put the redstone here. Remember. Okay, you see what happened? Now there's like a ghost image of the redstone. So now you can never put anything in that slot other than redstone. So it guarantees you reserve a slot and you can never get everything filled up with other stuff. Change it back to fast. Put the rest of this in there. I'm not going to just leave that there, so let's actually just like craft as much as we can. And then I'm going to tear it down. You can see it's super fast. And, yeah, that's good. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So that just saved us a heck of a lot of time, because I'd only be able to do these eight at a time. Otherwise. Okay, so, Cabaster. Should be able to craft up a stack of those. Yep, a stack of capacitors. Hello. Been waiting a long time to do that. Okay. 
And then double layer capacitor. Oh, it takes Yag Nuggets. Or Graphite does, but we're going to use Yag Nuggets. So we have Yag Ingots. Need to turn that into Nuggets. And a bunch of energetic alloy, that's fine. Yep, so we can turn it all into double layer capacitors. Cool. Just confirm. This doesn't. Capacitor, vibrant capacitor. Yeah, so you could either make the final tier of vibrant capacitor bank. You could either make it with a bunch of octatic capacitors, or you can make it with some of the previous tier. I was just making sure we didn't have to craft the previous tier of capacitor bank to make the vibrant. We don't. We just make it with four octatic. Okay, so now we got this. 32. Beautiful. How much emeratic do we have left? <laughs> Only two empowered emeratic. That was like the perfect amount. So yeah, that was like a stack of emeralds that I processed. So a stack of emeralds turns into 32 octatic capacitors. That's how much emerald it takes. Damn. Okay, so that's the best here. Now we can make it with electrical steel. Oh, we need vibrant crystal. I don't know how many of these I have. Let's make a bunch more nuggets. Give it a sec to populate. I can't wait till we switch over to applied energistics and we don't have to like wait for the crafting items to go back in for like five seconds. Let's make a bunch of those. And eight vibrant capacitor banks. So four of those equals a hundred million, right? Yeah, four of those equals a hundred million. So eight of these equals two hundred million RF is going to be our storage capacity. How's that for awesome? Okay, almost got a setup. So I've got an advanced connector on the vibrant capacitor bank side. Make sure that we can transfer in just as much as we extract from the generators. Just setting up the sensor for the vibrant capacitor bank. So this is going to be low power, which is white. So I want to say we have low power when we're below 50%. And this thing holds 200 million. So 50% is 100 million. So that's one followed by eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And similarly... Oh, right, we don't want to do 100% because it might not equal 100%. That kind of didn't work last time. So instead, we'll do greater than... Mm, 199? Followed by... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros? Yes, that should be right. And then we'll output red. Red is... High power, response to red. Yes, that's the right one. Okay. If we turn these two channels on, it should start to work. Oh, it's getting power. Is it sucked it dry? Sucked it dry? Okay, so... Yeah, now we're down to... Just as much as we can generate with the two crystals that are currently going, which is almost 24,000 RF per tick, which makes sense, because each one generates almost 12,000 RF. So, <laughs> numbers add up, and it should be double that once I get two more crystals on there. I'm um, getting the effect of the radiation, but yeah, look at how much friggin' power we're generating. Look at that. 21 million. 22 million. 23 million. That's a lot of power. That is ridiculous. And it's going to be more, it's going to be double that when I put the other two crystals on. And we can make that as big as we want, basically. Let's actually get more going on. So, that's all good. Yeah, the only problem is this thing, once again, just stopped working. Just replace it and it should work. Yep, there we go. So let me see if we have enough to generate a couple more crystals. It looks like we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm going to grab two more crystals and I'll be right back. Actually, I shouldn't have to grab any crystal at all. It should automatically extract it. So let's see if that happens. And, okay, extracted. 
Excellent. There we go. So now we got three going. Now it's at plus basically 36,000 RF per tick. We've already got 90 million. Oh my god. How much radiation do we have now? Almost 8,000. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. I just hope it doesn't like cause explosions or something. Like if I don't think explosions are a thing in Deep Resonance, but if it did and it like blew up everything here, I'm just uninstalling Minecraft. I'm only half joking. I'm not rebuilding this. This was so much work and it's so cool. So make it another one. It is. It's got the fluid for it. Yep. Got plenty of fluid in here. Enough for even another crystal, actually. All right. I'm gonna wait till the next crystal pops in and we're near to the max amount and see if this thing turns off properly. Yeah, look at this. We're getting 48,000 RF per tick. It's about to hit max. It should shut off. Mm. Loop power still on. Something's wrong. Yeah, so I had to destroy the redstone down here just to turn the generator off. Um, something is wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with what I've done. I've definitely entered the correct numbers in here. I've triple, quadruple checked that they have the right number of digits and all that. But something is wrong between the interaction between Xnet and Ender IO. It doesn't seem to be reading the energy correctly. I don't know why. It could be perhaps because this is a multi-block structure. Um, maybe somehow Xnet is reading this block that it's connected to as if it's just a single block rather than the power numbers for the whole thing? I don't know. So I think I'm going to have to find a different way to measure the amount of energy in there other than Xnet. Something else. But anyway, the basics for all this stuff is working. You know, the goal for this episode was to get the power generation working now that we've got the crystal generation going. And, well, we certainly have that, don't we? This is a thing of beauty. It's going to make my power so... Like, it's just going to solve my power problem. Of course, I still need to run new lines to distribute the power since most of my connections back at the base are those HV connectors from Immersive Engineering which are limited to 4,000 RF per tick, so that's going to have to change the infrastructure. But power generation, I'm going to say, is mostly solved. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. I've got to get to bed pretty soon. Otherwise, I would clean up more of this stuff here. And in the next episode, I'm going to fix this problem here with the reading of the amount of energy. Do a little bit more automation. There was something we needed to add here. Oh, yes, the resonating ore. We need to automate the um, insertion of the resonating ore, of course. And clean this place up, put facades and everything, and anything else that probably needs to be done. And make this place ready to go.